you guys, uh, we, uh, we, we apologize. We're the worst presenters ever. Um, <laughs> in every possible way, this is going to be the worst presentation you see at Black Hat, and we're very sorry. Among other things, all my pretty fonts and my slides are totally screwed because we're using my friend's laptop instead of mine. Um, but real quick, um, before we were going to give this talk, we were talking upstairs. We did a couple of dry runs and came to the conclusion that if, uh, if we hit every single one of our slides and spend exactly 50 seconds per slide, completely rock solid, we might get through this talk. Now we're 20 minutes in because of this, so um, I usually have a problem talking too fast, but under these circumstances, the only way we're going to get through the talk, so I'm just going to talk really fast the entire talk, and Dave will try to talk slow. So we're going to introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about, and then just get right into it. So Dave, shoot. Sure. So uh, apparently my microphone also isn't working. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Am I talking? Like, I don't know. Tom sounds louder to me, so you guys got it? Great. Okay. Can't hear me in the back. Um, I will try and talk as loud as I can without yelling. So we're here to talk about enterprise management systems and basically a combination of internal security, what's going on from, the, from an enterprise management system from a security perspective. Uh, again, I'm going to be kind of going through this at, a, at as fast a pace as I can just to try and catch up some of the time that we lost. Um, quick company intro, Matasano, we were formed about a year ago. Uh, we're basically a digital consultancy. We got a lot of material to cover. They don't care about who we are. I'm Tom. This is Dave. We're from a company called Matasano. Nice to meet you. We're going to go on. Hi. All right. So what we did, we had a, a research project where uh, we had the opportunity to look at a number of internal applications from a security perspective. And uh, you know, I'm going to keep inserting a little bit of our bios into this as we go through it. Uh, but, we, but, but we've been doing this for a long time. So we've been doing this for 10 years. And years plus finding vulnerabilities in different systems, um, starting from you know early days of of, of Unix security, um, you know up until today. So when we talk about internal, <laughs> we this slide is actually supposed to have labels on it. I don't know why they disappeared, but uh, it's pretty much because that's my luck today. But uh, inside of the blue were kind of external protocols, things that you'd see on the internet, uh, things that you would deploy in your DMZs. And, and the important thing to know about, about what we were trying to communicate here was that, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's pretty easy compared to, uh, external security is pretty easy compared to internal security, right? Um, from an access control perspective, you can put firewalls up, you can, you can block everything except traffic to the services that you need. Um, I know I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but compared to the internal network, it's a nightmare. It's really challenging. There's a number of different protocols. Uh, pretty much every one of those gray boxes was supposed to be one of them. But we're thinking about things like SAM, storage, backups, management applications. Um, I think people have this kind of intuitive sense that um, behind these firewalls, the applications that are running there are terrible. That if you have access to an internal network, it's pretty much game over. Um, we started with that hypothesis and went on to try and prove it. And yeah, um, we're going to demonstrate in this talk one way in which that's absolutely true. So, so some of, some of our, our, our core findings uh, that we're going we're gonna to elaborate on a little bit during this, this talk as much as we can. Uh, you know, we, we released an advisory. I don't actually remember when on on, on our iSCSI finding. Uh, we're basically able to bypass authentication to um, to to one, one of the, the major uh, SANS. Um, we broke leading VR projects. We, we, we pretty much everything that we looked at, we pretty much tore through is probably the easiest way to say. Which is not a testament to how good we are as vulnerability researchers. We've been doing it for a while, but you're going to see a bunch of other people who are astoundingly better than we are in terms of ripping through applications. So, you know, me versus HD, HD is going to win every time. But you take a storage area network protocol and you back it out, reverse it, figure out how the protocol works, and then send malformed messages to it. And yeah, you expect the, the storage appliance to crash, it's going to crash. You expect to be able to bypass authentication by setting a bit in the login header, yes, you're going to be able to do things like that. Disaster recovery protocols, disaster recovery is slang for backup. She who owns backup owns the whole network. Yeah, we broke the market leading disaster recovery thing just by looking at it pretty much. So. We're going to get back to this, but internal applications are horrible. And this talk is about a specific class of internal applications. Um, so we'll probably save some time just by getting through this material fast. Right. So, uh, you know, again, this is a justification slide. The reason why it's, it's, it's so crappy 
is simple. It's prioritization. No one's had to really think about the, the internal network as much as they've had to think about the perimeter. That's where we think attacks come from. And then also, uh, the way we handle internal security is through HR, right? Mostly firing people. Um, you know, the exciting thing, I think, from a, from a researcher perspective, and maybe this isn't exciting, maybe it's the exact opposite, it's horrifying, um, is that when you're dealing with, with, with applications that are built to be deployed inside of internal networks, security is beyond an afterthought. It wasn't thought of at all. Um, so for people that are, that are tired of really having to struggle to find vulnerabilities in, in, in commercial applications and operating systems today, uh, start looking at, 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 at agent-based applications or internal applications, and you're going to find it's pretty easy. Um, it doesn't take very long. Pretty rewarding. Um, you know, I think one of the things that, that, that shocked me when we went through this is how little has changed on the internal network. The same protocols that were there 10 years ago are there today. Um, yeah, we've built more on top of them, but the old ones aren't going away. They're staying there. And they're just as crappy as they were. Um, they have the same security problems they had. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I think today we're releasing, actually, Dino Dizovi in the audience, um, an advisory on um, AFP, which is Apple's uh, file server protocol. Raise your hands if you're in charge of securing the network of a graphic designer or one of the three people who use AFP. <laughs> we, we own you completely. <laughs> um, but you know, NFS is still everywhere internally. It, it's something that, that, that I haven't dealt with as a security professional on the external side in years. But when we start looking internally, it's everywhere. But even the new protocols for internal storage aren't much better. Internal applications in general, if it's not deployed in front of a firewall, it hasn't been looked at. Nobody's tested it. Nobody's tried to secure it. These protocols are terrible. We'll skip this one pretty quickly, but network backup is a great example of, I honestly have no idea how to speak to this particular slide here. <laughs> I'll apologize in advance, but um, do we have findings in network backup systems? Yes, we do. One of the problems you're gonna see in this, in this slide here is that we generally won't release things without patches. We're running nine to 12 months backlogged with vendors right now. We've done one, about two. AFP is our second advisory that we've done so far. Um, but we've got more than 30 backlog. It takes vendors forever, just absolutely forever, to come up with patches. Our policy is we have a patch, we'll go forward and announce what the particular finding is. But um, So we have things in network backup, but you know, if you have an NDA or, I don't know, if you yell at us and beat us over the head, we'll tell you about it. But, um, but if you find it first, you can sell it. So that's great. Printers, another example of you know an internal thing that people don't think about very much. And I'd love to tell you about Printer Slammer and why you guys should be horrified about the possibility of printer-based malware. But right now, I think we're just going to leave it at be horrified about the possibility of printer-based malware. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think you know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but when, but from a research perspective, it's an interesting place to go. There's a lot of of proprietary protocols to be looking at. There's a lot of reverse engineering that can be done. And then um, after doing a little bit of it, one, once you have the protocol figured out, you're gonna start breaking things very quickly. It, it does not take very long. The hard part was figuring out how to get the data in there. Once it's in there, things just start falling left and right. Um, and then if you're, if you're responsible for managing this stuff, um, I'm sorry to hear that, right? It's, it, it's definitely not gonna be easy um, you know, I, I think that this is going to be where the industry starts going. If you look at um, some of the re recent vulnerabilities that people have been finding, you see people starting to focus on things like AV, and they're looking at, at, at antivirus agents. So you're beginning to see people start shifting towards things that, we're, that you're going to start seeing on the enterprise. And one vulnerability in, that, that's identified in one of those can affect almost every machine inside of you know, every company, right? So um, we kind of blew through that really quickly. We're going to come to the second part of our talk where we actually start to try and get some focus about what we're talking about. Um, we're here today to talk about a specific class of applications that run on pretty much everybody's internal networks. Um, they're called enterprise management applications. And uh, we'd like to explain what these things are by drawing a quick comparison. Which this slide, of course, is not going to work at all because we're on Dino's laptop, but we'll try. <laughs> so. I, I think that the theme of this is pretty simple, right? Uh, the difference between a, a bot and a botnet and an agent and, and, and an agent management network um, is pretty much you pay a lot more for one, right? Uh, from, from, fun, from a functionality perspective, they do almost the same thing. Um, 
which you suppose isn't a bad thing. They dramatically ease the, uh, you know, the burden of managing tens of thousands of machines. You suppose that it's inevitable. But the point that we want to make is that um, agent is a marketing term for bot. There's just no difference between the two of them in terms of what they do, what their goals are, and what the mechanisms are. So some examples of those mechanisms include, you know, bots have command and control channels. They use things like IRC or um, I guess some, some, some of the more modern ones are getting a little bit more sophisticated, but you're still seeing IRC, which is the, you know, the, the same internet relay chat protocol that people have been using for years to waste time and attack people there, have been using that, that, that same protocol to communicate with bots all over the world and get them to you know, do distributed denial of service attacks or expand their botnet by having their bots attack more systems and, and have them automatically extend their because it's easy, and it, it, it's easy, and it works, and IRC is an underrated protocol, but the guys developing the new botnet software, how are those guys compete and try to make themselves sound cool and all that, those people wish for the kind of stuff that enterprise management vendors waste their money building. Middleware applications, message-oriented middlewares, highly sophisticated channels for conveying commands to tens of thousands of machines for minimal overhead, maximum transparency, the simplest possible way to get the commands out. These are both command and control channels. The difference is that one of them is proprietary and one of them is open source, and therefore one of them's been looked at and understood, and the other one, nobody has any clue what's running inside of them until somebody gets paid to go look under the covers and find out what's going on with them, which is something that we're going to talk about in just a second. Right. And so we come to the actual content of our talk. So um, enterprise management applications, aka agents, aka bots, um, are they a threat for you or are they a menace? Well, we talked a little bit about what this stuff is and what, what it does. These are the pieces of software that the IT people put into the default build on all your machines, running in the system tray, running in the background, running as a process in the, in the, the process menu. Um, things you don't even know are there, designed to be transparent, designed so that people don't know that they're there. And, and what do they do? They make sure that you're up to date with the most recent configuration on your desktop. They make sure that servers have the right registry keys set. They make sure that you're running the, the most current revision of the software that you're supposed to be running. That's the purpose of these applications. Um, um, Todd, just one quick thing, DSM, uh, what's the acronym? DSM is uh, just another marketing slang word for agent-based management applications. It stands for distributed systems management. It's the term that we can't actually use vendor names for vendors that we don't have patches for, but I'll tell you that there's a particular vendor that particularly likes this acronym and hint, hint. So there you go, I'm just a jerk. Um, so you could call this a snapshot of what the DSM market is, but really this is about the $1.4 billion US dollars market for bots. And here are some of the vendors in the space. IBM, Computer Associates with Unicenter, BMC with Patrol, Control M, Change Manager, ConfigureSoft, BladeLogic, Big Fix, a variety of vendors out there, all of which have um, essentially variants on agent-based management software. There's lots and lots of vendors in this space. And this, by the way, is not a list of the specific ones that we tested per se. There's um, at least one in here that we didn't test. So, but the, 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 thing, to, the thing to remember is that the leading vendor in this space right now, or one of the leading vendors in this space, has revenue comparable to Symantec. They make that much money selling agents that install on all these machines, make, selling bots, essentially. So here's something that I want you to remember as we talk about the different ways that we looked at these agent-based management systems and tried to break them and do things with them. And that's that the architecture for these things is essentially that you have tens of thousands of agents connecting to a single central management server, which is solely responsible for the security of all these agents. Every one of these agents runs with maximum system you know, privileges, runs at operator level, runs at administrator, local admin.